there, there are no vegan rapists in the prisons of the world. You, you go find me a vegan rapist. I'd love to hear about a story. I'll show you prisons around the world full of meat, dairy, and egg-eating rapists and child molesters and murderers and people that rob and steal. In fact, I'll even take it a step further when we talk about health. Go find me a hospital with a bunch of sick vegans in it. I'll show you hospitals full of people with heart disease, cancers, diabetes, osteoporosis, kidney problems, etc. All stemming from animal protein, the main cause of every major disease on this planet. Welcome to the Cannabis Vegan. I'm Jason Lodge. On today's show, we're going to be looking at one of my most favorite vegan master counselors. Emily from the Bite Size Vegan, as well as checking out a 12-year-old vegan master that has already changed the game for all of us, Dominic Gurargi. This and more on The Cannabis Vegan. cell phone and you have a computer it is unfair to pick one thing that lions do that you want to mimic when you don't want to mimic anything else they do when lions walk up and greet each other they snip each other's ass when i came in this room you did not kneel down and sniff my ass in the country within a year. The one thing about the hemp industry then, it was very small. I felt there wasn't a lot of room for competitiveness, so I decided that I was gonna carry everybody's product. Many, many products from food to shampoo to clothing, you know, everything. My business was very successful, and then 9-11 happened. Flight 93 crashed about well, less than four airplanes went home, and my whole focus switched from hemp to raising money and I actually designed a 9-11 flag, and the first one prototype was made of hemp. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, Colorado legalizes marijuana. Who would have thought back then that the road to the legalization of industrial hemp would start with marijuana? But it did. So I was extremely happy that um, cannabis was back on the table. And hemp Dog Cafe was born, and I decided I wanted to take foods that are really deemed unhealthy, like a hot dog, but it's America's favorite food, and make it healthy. We've been working on an express menu. I think it's going to be very successful. Three hemp dogs, three hemp burgers, and three hemp pizzas. 
really just focus on getting the simple menu out all across the country. delicious. Ooh, I want the legs. <laughs> okay, sweetie. You sure you don't want any human? I told you, Dad, I'm having toe human. <laughs> okay, well, that's more for us. I want the tits. Oh, and the dick. Let's jump into our next one here. This one comes to us from a very special and warm place in my heart. This is Emily from Bite Size Vegan. I respect and honor everything that she has done in the past, the present, and in the future. She really has made a difference for many. I have learned so much. I thought I really understood uh, quite a bit. I do do my research often. But to have somebody that really can break it down like Emily can, I absolutely love you. Emily, amazing job. Keep it up. Keep it up. Also, what brings me to her is the fact of the knowledge base that she has really spread and how others have really taken note. And since the story is to cover a little bit about her, but mostly about the 12-year-old boy that has changed so many lives. So many lives. Dominic has really changed a lot of the reality that most people can't even fathom at most of their ages. At 20 years old, people expect to have a lot of change. Well, this, this little guy, he changed things at 8 years old, okay? Absolutely amazing. Before we jump into that, I'd like to also bring you a little bit to the cannabis vegans' overall feeling of how I feel about a vegan master of this magnitude. Dominic has really showed what he can do as a small one person, one child can do. And I really am impressed with a lot of people's enthusiasms of veganism, enthusiasm about how they feel about themselves and healthiness and what they can do to save their family and friends. But when it really comes down to discussing real information that people could use, I encourage you guys to very, very much stay away from anything that veers away from really knocking on anybody. And I'm not gonna name any names, but just encourage you guys to veer right on track and just stay with the information. We don't really need to have an opinion that bases on something of a negative remark, unless the person was a negative and it requires it, the remarks are useless. In fact, the animals don't deserve that, and all of our energy should be put towards peace and love, 
nothing short. So let's make sure we consider these things when we watch a little boy that's more professional and more adult than most of anybody I have ever seen. Let's go ahead and take a look. But Dominic Jiraji isn't just any kid. An animal activist since the age of seven and co-president of the nonprofit Animal Hero Kids, Dominic firmly stands against the use and abuse of animals for entertainment and is really making waves in his community. Pun intended. Hi, it's Emily from Bite Size Vegan and welcome to another Vegan Nugget. Today I'm excited to introduce you to Dominic Jiraji. At the age of eight, Dominic had bull hooks banned in Margate, Florida, which I'll let him talk about more. Now with five years of animal activism under his belt and at the ripe old age of 12, Dominic continues to fight for captive animals in the entertainment industry. Dominic shared what inspired him to go vegan and become active. Well, first I watched the documentary The Cove and that kind of got me to uh, protesting the Miami Sea Aquarium, which then caused me to become vegetarian and we started learning about more stuff then like a month after I became vegan. I protest at the Miami Sea Aquarium and five years now we've been protesting there. We've had many different events happen there where it got a lot of cars turned around where the cars don't go in. Dominic hit the ground running and spoke out against the cruel use of bull hooks, resulting in their banning. When I was eight years old, I banned bull hooks and electric pods from being used in the city of Margate, in Florida. I'm eight years old, and I live in Boca Town. I do not like coal brothers or any other circus that use animals. They use electrical rods and electric animals. They take bull hooks and eat the elephants. Little baby elephants are taken from their mothers to be beaten, please do all you can to help these animals. Kids have a voice. Thank you very much. Bull hooks are these like batons where they have like, a hook on the top of them where they beat the elephants with them. And there's actually videos of the one of the trainers using the bull hook um, to bring the the elephant somewhere where they have damage on their feet and other parts of their body. With other kids his age flocking to aquariums, zoos, and circuses, I ask Dominic why he protests against them. SeaWorld and Miami Sea Crime, where they just take, uh, where they put them into this cove and they take half of them and put them into SeaWorld in, in the Sea Crime, and they just put them in these tiny tanks that um, are, some of them are labeled like Lolitas. Lolitas is illegal. It's, way too small for her. And circuses are just animals being taken, tortured, and put into these places. And it's just really depressing there for them. I'll leave you with some excerpts from Dominic's Animal Hero Kids State of the Union Address. I, Dominic, Animal Hero Kids President, pledge to speak out for all animals in need. All of our voices together will stop animal abuse. We need to be the voices for the voiceless. We, the Animal Hero Kids, promise to stop animal abuse by not going to circuses that use animals for entertainment. Wild animals belong in the wild. We, the Animal Hero Kids, across the nation will speak up for the most abused animals of all, factory farmed animals, like cows, chickens, and pigs. If you want to find out more about Dominic and his activist network, check out the links in the video description below. Stay tuned to the channel to hear from more Animal Hero Kids. If you liked this video, do give it a thumbs up and share it around to help show what kids can accomplish. If you're new here, I'd love to have you as a subscriber. I put out fresh content covering all aspects of veganism every Monday, Wednesday, and some Fridays. To help support Bite Size Vegan's educational efforts, please see the support links below or click on the Nugget Army icon there or the link in the sidebar. Now go live vegan, end captivity, and I'll see you soon. If I can rip his head off, rip his f***ing head off, what does that mean? It's very important to do it. Right? Get there. When they start squirting through the f***ing head, oh, boom, right under that chin. Shake that hook in sometimes. And you hear that screaming.
All right, guys, welcome back. Wow, absolutely amazing. Inspirational. Thank you, Dominic. Thank you, Emily. Much appreciation, you guys. Before we end on this last one, though, I'd like to go ahead and share with you guys Emily's website. I encourage you guys to hop on over to bitesizevegan.com and really check out what she has to offer to get to know Emily and just to help encourage others to learn more. She has so much that she has shared, so much that people can learn from, and I encourage you guys to really take a look. Also, with so many different people coming out with um, vegan books this next year, being 2016 now, I have seen quite a few vegan books coming out, and I have to say much applause, guys. Much applause. A lot of hard work has gone into these this research, but at the same time, I find it quite impressive as somebody is the magnitude that Emily has put into her development and research in all vegan topics. I have very, very much respect for somebody that has put together a book that is going to not only help educate, but help save lives everywhere. And she's offering this for free as an ebook. So I encourage you guys to hop on over to her site, check it out, and join the team. And I encourage you guys to really get in contact with her, give her some information, give her some feedback, tell her what you think, and let her know that the Cannabis Vegan sent you. Also, I'd like to mention, too, that she's got great information on a lot of topics, from food to health to even clothing. I encourage you guys to really, really do your research and really get to know Emily from the Bite Size Vegan. Well, guys, more to come from the Cannabis Vegan. This one comes to us from 420intel.com. Kosher Pot, world's first certified kosher medical marijuana will be sold in New York. This here is a big deal. So many people are looking forward to this. Now that we are here in the new year, just moments away from January 4th, um, it's very awesome to see that kosher really is beginning to step into the forefront of the cannabis vegan reality. As we can clearly see, that the report basically breaks down how exactly they have utilized the kosher symbol and how they're going to come forth with the rest of the uh, information. But with the new studies coming out with January 4th just around the corner, it's basically uh, showing much promise that we're going to have a lot of people having a lot of help in New York very soon. Just two days, guys. So we'll see how that progresses. We're not too sure exactly how much oil they're really going to have or exactly how it's going to work but we'll see and we'll keep you uh, updated as the, we find out exactly what the oil contains because we definitely need more testing and we need to configure it exactly what we're going to do for more on that go to 420intel.com moving to our next story this one comes to us from marijuana.com the CBD research has just been exploding now with the DEA loosening the restrictions on the study and the benefits of the cannabinoids, basically aka CBD, cannabidiol, it really shows that they have a lot of research underway coming through. So it really is showing much promise. Uh, all over the United States it's really showing a lot of promise for everybody, honestly. And in my opinion, it's only going to show probably within the next two years uh, what the changes have really done for everybody, you know, adults, seniors, and of course, infants and teenagers, you know, I really do think there's really no age, uh, that you can't really be, you know, utilize this as well as use it during pregnancy as well. As you can clearly see what they have marked down here, it really shows where they're going with the situation. And as we look forward to the next two weeks, it really shows that uh, they really have a lot more changes that are underway that are really positive for everybody to, to really see what's coming new, but really just bringing light to what's already happened in the past. 
For more on that, go to marijuana.com. Our next story comes to us from greenmedinfo.com. Okay, now this story really is uh, catching my eye because, again, there's so much things changing uh, related to Alzheimer's disease all over the board. I mean, it doesn't matter if it's in between plant-based solid news of just veganism or if it's just into cannabism because the cannabis industry really has uh, a really developing stage in the forefront of a lot of the medical problems that we see today, especially things like Alzheimer's disease. And the fact that there's so many changes happening, we can really see just here alone what exactly we found out that's even more breakthroughs and understanding what exactly we're looking at. And from from my perspective of it, there's a lot of different things that, that could be even more played into it besides just lifestyle. But the fact that we're really considering it that Alzheimer's is really underlined when you have this issue and this is uh, progressing even further, that is the complete sign of a pineal gland calcification. That's what that is. And it's signed, sealed, and delivered when you have this. But we can reverse it and slow it down. So the more research that has been developed, the more that I am discovering, and the more that is coming down the pipeline, along with the development research that I have uncovered, we are about to uncover even more than any of us saw. But in this article specifically, it shows that we have even more on the table as of right now. We could easily ingest a gram to a half a gram of coconut oil infused with a full spectrum rosin oil or even hash oil or even cannabis itself so to see the very the variations of both realities coming to play stepping into light now it really shows that this is exactly what's going to happen for more details on this i encourage you guys to check out this article and come to greenmedinfo.com please guys Give me, your, give me your comments, your research. Let me know. Comment below, please. Moving on to our next story. Again, the Alzheimer's is so high on the chart. It's around the board everywhere. Seeing that something as simple as adding hemp seed could have an anti-Alzheimer's benefit, new studies are revealing every day that those that are consuming everything cannabis. So what I am saying to you is, if you are consuming or thinking of consuming the cannabis vegan full spectrum lifestyle, then the benefits are basically nothing short of you've now stepped into human reality. Because the cannabis vegan is nothing short of just being human learning to use and utilize this earth around our neighborhoods, around our friends and family's backyards and front yards. Even your spare bedroom could be used to grow fruits and vegetables and medicine that can help everybody, including yourself. As we develop through this story specifically, you can clearly see that hemp seed is growing a huge increase of popularity just period people are using hemp seeds they're using hemp oils people are just getting into you know using hemp milks they're learning to make hemp milk so we can clearly see with the rise of cannabis legalization for medical marijuana and also the legalization for recreational cannabis use it really shows much promise by using a high level of the hemp seed um, intake a day you know, adding it to your cereals, your shakes, your, your salads, your soups, your chilies, your sandwiches. It doesn't matter. Just by having it in there, everywhere. And also consuming the very cannabis essence itself, vaporized and edibles, it's really going to play into a role of getting your endocannabinoids flooded and making sure that you are saturated to an extent that your body 
is getting that homeostasis overall from the omega-3, omega-6, and omega-9 essential fatty acids. I encourage you guys to do more research. Please, guys, so much is coming down the pipeline, and with your help, the Cannabis Vegan Society will push forward, and we will be able to easily get more and more people from what is sick to completely healthy. And it doesn't even matter if it's Alzheimer's disease or if it's complete AIDS. There is a way, you guys. We need to keep doing our research and pushing forward. For more to come on The Cannabis Vegan. You put a two-year-old child in a crib with a bunny rabbit and an apple? Let me know when the child eats the bunny rabbit and plays with the apple. Each other's ass. When I came in this room, you did not kneel down and sniff my ass. 